agenda had been slightly updated from what was originally posted and uh, early more formatting no significant changes. Your latest agenda is in your um, folders. Uh, but it reads the same with some slight limitations. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Approved. I'll second. Got a motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Four to zero. We want to proclamation and presentation. Tab two. The various chamber of commerce update. Mr. J. Scott Perry. Good afternoon, Council. Um, thank you for letting me make our report from June and where we're at so far. Um, the report that I provided before the end of the month, which you have in front of you, which says 16 new members joined in the month of June, which is a record, but it's inaccurate because I had two more come after this was sent to the city clerk. So we actually had 18 new members in the month of June. So very exciting. As I may remind you, we are in the last month of our competition with the Tiber with the Leesburg Chamber, and we are doing really, really well. And um, Anybody who knows of anyone with a business anywhere, they can join the Tiberius Chamber and be part of the Fun Chamber, which is what we are. Speaking of being in the Fun Chamber, had a couple of events this past month in June that I want to point out to you because they were really successful and really significant. New events, great benefits to our chamber, and that was we did a, a first time we ever did a drink called an event called Dirt to Drinks. It was an event reaching out to the construction and growth and trains industry. We, it was the first time we had, to have her, had it, we invited everyone we could, it was not limited to members, and we had 125 plus people there, at least, I mean, people came and went, a very successful event, we're going to be doing it again in this next quarter, we just have to find a better facility that can house that many people, it was really great, and we did get five new members as a result of that one night, so it was a very successful event, um, the industry really likes that we're the only chamber providing that opportunity to them for the people within the construction and growth industry to network with each other, and that's what they want. So that's really cool. The second was our first pints in politics with Leslie Campione, the chair of the county commission. This was an exclusive event to members, um, and it was just a very informal town hall. It went very well. Uh, Ms. Campione was pleased. The members that attended, we had a little over 30 people in attendance. They all enjoyed it. It was very informative, and it was a great uh, benefit to them. So we'll be scheduling that again in a couple months, probably this time going with a school board member. That was what the response from the people that came that night. Uh, you can see the rest of it. Tomorrow we have a free kids zone in uh, the tech very in the square, uh, thanks to some great sponsors. And um, Monday there's a groundbreaking. Hopefully, hopefully you can come to it. Uh, it's, uh, the address is there on the report. It's at 5 o'clock. Uh, Dr. Balkrin is moving her practice from Mount Dora to Tavares, where she lives in Tavares, and she's very excited about that. And then you can see the rest of the things. The only other thing I would like to mention, point out, I'm sorry it takes so long, August 7th, our teacher and staff appreciation luncheon. This is very, very important. It's a great opportunity for us to show appreciation to our teachers and staff in Tavares. They do a great job. Um, we have, as I'm sure you know, a new principal at Tavares High School. I want to really knock his socks off because he's coming from a town nearby, and I will show you what we can do in Tavares. Uh, so anybody who can come to that, participate in that, and we are still looking for sponsors. If there's any questions? Questions? Great. Thank Talk you. Mr. Barry, I was talking with Dr. Balkaran. She's super nervous about Monday. She was asking me all these questions, uh, and I told her she should I don't know if you've talked to her I have. in the past day or two. Emailed her, emailed with her yesterday morning. Okay, yes, sir. She was really concerned about, you know, is it going to go off okay? Is it going to be yeah. all right? How many people are going to be there? We're, we're, I'm trying to get the word out. We're trying to get people there. But it's, it's what happens when, I mean, she really was set on this date, even though we just signed up two weeks ago. That's not a lot of time to get something out. Uh, but we're, we're, she has family coming in, so we're going to do it. We're going to support it as best we can. Yes, sir. I plan okay. to be there, but Good. I'll be really careful giving her a shovel. Last time she had a sharp instrument in her hand, I lost it though. <laughs> <laughs> well, that goes, you shouldn't really make your doctor angry. Okay? <laughs> should pay your bills. Thank you. Sir. <laughs> we move on to swearing in by city attorney and disclosure of next part by communication, Mr. Wade. No part by judicial matters today, Mayor. We move on to reading of all ordinance with resolution to the record. Thank you, Mayor. We have one resolution at first notice. Resolution 2019-04, resolution of the City of City Council of the City of Tiberias, Florida, calling for a bond referendum on November 5, 2019, or such other day as may be authorized by law within the City of Tiberias, on the question of whether the City of Tiberias should finance a 
parking garage in the city of Tiberias by issuing ad valorem bonds in the fiscal amount not to exceed $27 million to bear interest at a rate not to exceed the maximum rate permitted by law by levying an ad valorem tax on all taxable property within the city of Tiberias to be issued for the purpose of repaying such bonds, providing for severability, repeal of prior conflicting resolutions, and other actions of the city on an effective date. And we have Ordinance 2019-14 at second reading, and Ordinance of the City of Tiberias, Florida, amending the code ordinance, says by adding Administration Article 5, Section 2-170, elections by establishing a candidate qualifying period, providing for codification, providing for severability and conflicts, and providing for an effective date. Thank you, Mr. Beck. Move on to the consent agenda. Is there anyone in the audience that has uh, like to speak on any item that's on the consent agenda? Council? Move to approve. Second. We have a motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. 4 to 0. Move on to resolutions. Tab 6. Resolution 2019 04, Performing Arts Center and Parking Garage Bond Referendum. First notice. City Administrator, Mr. Brewery. Uh, two months ago, the council requested that the development and funding of the Performing Arts Center and Parking Garage should be decided by the voters of Tavares by referendum on Tuesday, November 5th, 2019. We have since engaged the services of our bond council and our city attorney uh, to develop uh, the resolution which holds the language. And if you go to the third page of the resolution, the language would say, would say on your ballot the following. Bonds for designing, permitting, constructing, did we change that and operating?
resolution language we got our bond council on, and although I think it's your intent to disclose to the public that there will be operational costs of this building, just like there are with the library and the public safety building, the city hall, um, <coughs> and we want to disclose that and disclose to them how much that's going to be. We're not actually using the bond money to pay operational costs. So we have to be real clear in bond record language, and that's why the operational we're still obviously going to have operational costs. We're just not using the bond money. We're not borrowing money to pay operational costs. All right. Thank you. Council, questions, comments? Uh, this is my only question. It's going to be computers with the word operating, but it's already done. So. Any other questions? That's where it's been. Move to approve. I'll second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. 4-0. Mayor, if I can say one more thing. So this is before you as a resolution. This is not actually an ordinance. We're passing the, the referendum by resolution. But because of the importance and the magnitude of this, we're bringing it to you twice. So rather than have a first reading and a second reading, this is really just more in the nature of public disclosure, notification. It will be advertised like an ordinance. We'll come back to you again uh, for a second time. We'll discuss it again. Um, and the effective date will probably be, will probably be assuming the second approval of it, <coughs> the effective date of the resolution. I think that would work better. Now I'm not sure we'll talk about that. That doesn't affect you all. All right, thank you. We'll move on to ordinances, public hearing. We have nothing on the first reading. Second reading, we have tab 7, ordinance 2019 14, establishing a candidate qualifying period. Is city clerk, just go back. Thank you, Mayor. The uh, Lake County Supervisor of the Legends Office has asked all of the Lake County municipalities to define a candidate qualifying period. The city of Tiberias had a qualifying end date but no start date. So um, um, we have taken a look at it and we have determined that um, a two week period beginning August 1st at 12 o'clock noon and ending August 15th at 12 noon would correspond with our charter as well. Um, most of the cities do correspond with the state and they have four day qualifying periods. So we have a little bit more of a, um, a longer period. The only thing I correct me if I'm wrong, is this for this current year or the following? No, it will begin this um Council? Or excuse uh, we do have a request to speak for him. Uh, we had uh, Miss Denise Morata. Would you like to come forward and state your address? Three minutes. Denise Morata, Rural Harbor. My only question is, is this going to have any effect on people who have already picked up their packages to be candidates for this election this year? No. Thank you. I have a question. So the qualifying period is when you submit your completed packet, not your entire time to keep the signatures to the money. Um, there are two pre-qualifying uh, forms that you can turn in that can kick off your campaign so you can go ahead and do your signatures, get your signs, accept money. Once you, and those can be turned in at any time. Um, there are certain forms that fall within qualifying forms, and those are the only forms that we need to be turned in during that period. And, and um, the um, information is on the website, and I do have to Any other questions? I'll move to approve more 2019-24. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries 4-0. We'll move on to general government, tab 8, land donation for permanent water pump station utilities. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. This is about land donation for a permanent water pump station in the Waterman region. In order to continue to support growth up there for the future, we have, uh, our engineers have determined that we need a water booster pump station. 
Lake Hermosa Village LLC, you might recall them as Avalon, have offered to donate 1.5 acres. In turn, they have requested some impact fee credits, down to 37,000, and they've also uh, want the guarantee that we can supply capacity and future pressure for 10 years. So uh, we have looked at three alternatives up there, and this has been determined to be the best site. The option is to approve acceptance of the donation or disapprove. Uh, staff recommends that we approve. Uh, the only physical impact is the consideration for impact fee credits in the amount of $37,000. And the contract has been reviewed by the. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Do you have a request to speak for this? Same rules. Colorado Pearl Harbor. Um, the $37,000, is that a fair market value for one yeah. and a half acres of land? Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's probably cheap. It's cheap? It's probably cheap. Probably cheap. Did anybody get uh, an appraisal on the place? We had an appraisal on the stormwater parcel that's uh, adjacent to <coughs> the, uh, to the uh, um, Adelon School. And then we also got an appraisal in the market area and, uh, uh, for another site that we were looking at purchasing with dollars. And that appraisal for a even smaller site came out at higher than this. Thank you. So we, we, we thought it passed the smell test. Looks good to you. Thank you. Good question. Carson? I have a question. Yes. So I know that your dreams maintain the water pressure for the next 10 years. When would that start? When the project reaches substantial completion. Their project or ours? When our project reaches substantial completion. Good question. Any other questions? I want to point out that provision. That's a good question, Anna, because we talked about that some in the negotiations. That really is more of an aspirational goal uh, as opposed to a commitment. We're not committing. They have not uh, pre-purchased uh, water reserve capacity. It's going to be on a first come as available basis. But what they were asking us is for an assurance that we thought we could easily give that um, when we do these improvements, it's going to provide sufficient water flow as designed to service that entire basin up there. That's the intent for them to give us. They said we were willing to give you the land, but we want to make sure that do that, your improvements are going to serve us out through build out. And based on what our engineers tell us, that's what that's what we need out there to finish that whole area out there in North of the hospital. Thank you. <laughs> and just to make sure I understand this thirty seven thousand dollar impact credit is only to various impact credits, correct? I still have to pay the county impact base. And, and it's only water impact credits because they're the, the land they're giving us is for a water plant. So they'll still have to pay sewer impact fees and then have to pay road impact fees for the county and everybody else. <coughs> Any other questions? Mr. Clark, uh, when you were nice enough to give me the tour around and kind of show me the different things in Terry's, when we were in that area, I thought, if, if my memory's correct, you had said like you think that we're eventually going to need a what, like a clean water storage facility out there. Is that am I close on that? It's not a need. That's a that's a one. That's a, yes. an extra security budget for our water supply. But no, the pump station will take us is for our life. This pump station that we're proposing now. So it would eliminate the need to have a water storage facility out there. Yes. No, it won't eliminate. No, it does. That's not a need. He wants a that. He doesn't need it. Okay. We, we do not need wells out there. We will never need wells out there. It would be a better system one day they have that. Okay. And if we have this 1.5 acres, could it go there? Yes. Okay. Like yes. This would be a step forward on, if you're saying it's a want, not a need, this would yes. be a step forward in that want. Yes. I think that's cool. The, the, the footprint for wells are very small, like the size of a car or a van. So yes, but there's plenty of room to put you well where she would be. That's everything I have. All right. Captain, how do you want to move on this? I'll move on. 
move to approve. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. 4 0. Thank you. We're going to move on to agenda item number 11 budget workshop. Tab 9. Budget workshop general fund presentation. City administrator and finance. Mr. Curry. City Council developed some broad budget goals for the city administrator to use as guidance in developing a budget. I've included all of those broad budget goals uh, in your package. And if you look at them, you'll see either a Y or an N at the end of them. The Y stands for, yes, it made it into the budget. The N stands for, no, it is not in the budget. The goal was to create a balanced budget, and so not all of the goals are achieved. Just want to make sure everyone's got a copy of that. Do you have a copy of that? Okay. So if you look at your, your um, Exhibit A in the agenda package, we will have a listing of each council member's broad budget goals. And at the end of each one of those broad budget goals, by your name, is a Y or an N. Uh, if it's got a Y, it's in the budget. If it's got an N, it's not in the budget. So that's the first thing I wanted to point out. The draft budget reflects a property tax millage rate decrease of seven from 7.119 mills down to 6.95 mills. It also reflects a debt service millage rate, millage rate decrease from 0 0.3052 mills to 0 0.2932 mills. This was a council goal and it was achieved. The first budget workshop, this one, is to deliver and present and then discuss the general fund. You have just received the budget. Uh, Lori will get up through PowerPoint presentation and give you a broad overview of the budget to pour into you in these books. There are about a half a million numbers in the budget book. Many, many, many numbers. Uh, so, Lori's goal will be to orient you so you can focus on the areas that are most concerned to you. The second budget workshop is on July 17th. And at that budget workshop, we'll present some more numbers related to your enterprise funds. That's your water business, your sewer business, your stormwater enterprise, your solid waste or garbage collection enterprise your seaplane based marina business, and your pavilion on the lake business. So those will be other budgets coming forward at the next. The one you have before you is your general fund, lease, fire, and that budget. Okay, so the maximum tentative millage rate will be set at the third budget workshop on July 24th. A fourth and fifth budget workshop is scheduled for August 7th and August 21st. And then two public hearings for the public, September 4th and September 18th. Your five-year capital approval program will be delivered at that August 7th budget workshop. The city administrator and staff will develop a general fund budget for FY20. FY20 begins October 1st, 2019 and goes to September 30th, 2020 and we refer to that as our FY20 budget. It totals $19,214,106 which is approximately 6.1% higher than the prior year's budget. It includes, among many items, the following. Number one, it includes a similar level of service. 
the general fund millage rate has been decreased. The debt service millage rate has been decreased. Reserves appropriation has been increased by 30000 The fire assessment fee is level funded. There is no increase to the fire assessment fee. Employee raises are set at 3.75%. Healthcare increased costs are at 6.1% with the employer and the employee sharing in that 6.1% increase in cost. There are two new positions that are funded primarily by the enterprise funds. One is a staff accountant and one is a part-time warehouse employee. We have increased the street paving budget from 172,000 plus all the grants we get to 225,000 or a quarter of a million plus all the grants we get. Our library is scheduled to be expanded. As you know, it's a $3 million expansion program. We've lined up $1 million in grant funding. We have an application for about a half a million with the state, and we have about another uh, 1.5 to get. You'll see the design going forward for the library expansion in this upcoming budget. The History Museum has been funded for its preliminary design services. You'll see money in there to design a full build-out of the new History Museum and the old train station. We would use that uh, design to apply for grants or develop a final budget in the following fiscal year to actually do final design and construction. There is a senior center preliminary design program as well in the budget. Again, the preliminary design will be completed in the upcoming fiscal year and it will be used to obtain grants to the, for the final design and the construction or to be funded at the correct dollar figure. And the senior center will be programmed next to the library. A new public works facility estimated at eight $8.1 million is in the budget. The next fiscal year would have the design completed. The year after that, we would be doing construction. The rebuilding of the Seaplane Basin Marina is in the budget. 98% of that is scheduled to be funded by insurance proceeds. 2% is to be our share to the insurance claim. There are three new police vehicles for our uh, public, for our police department. A new Beats on the Brick event was put into the budget. We are looking at improving the cemetery with restrooms. We all know there are no restrooms out there. So we're looking at adding restrooms to the cemetery, small storage facility, uh, and improving the cemetery. We are looking at completely rebuilding Wooten Wonderland Children's Park. The splintering wood has passed its useful life. It is beyond its useful life. It needs to be replaced completely. That too is in the budget. We are looking at a uh, slight uh, increase to the uh, Christmas lighting program as well as the July 4th fireworks program. At the proposed lower millage rates, a homeowner with a house valued at $150,000 and a homestead exemption would pay $60.36 per month for this general fund budget. Cuts. There were a lot of good projects, good initiatives that needed to be cut. I have provided you a cut list. I've given it to you in landscape in your um, package there so you can actually see it better. And I'd like to orient you to some things related to the cut list. So there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of really good things that could not be
fit into the budget while balancing it and meeting all of your goals. They are all listed here. The first column says is titled Cuts or Reduced. Every single item has the word cut or reduced in it. And I know it's obvious, but I'll say it. If you see the word cut, it means it's out, gone, the whole thing. It is not in the budget. If you see the word reduced, it is in the budget. I reduced it. Self-explanatory, but you need to just be aware of that little title of what it means. Every one of those items has been identified as cut or reduce. The next column, you'll see two words for a header on that one. Those two headers are enhanced or similar. Enhanced means it was not in last year's budget. Never existed. New. If it was cut, obviously it was a new program that was cut. If it says the word enhanced. If it says similar, it means it wasn't last year's budget, and I cut it, or reduced it. So those two columns are very important because it will immediately tell you, was it in last year's budget, or is this a new program? Was it cut, or was it reduced? Usually the way I read this is I look at an item, and then I look at whether it was in last year's budget or not, then I looked at whether it was cut or reduced. So you should be able to go through all these items and uh, see whether they are new items that someone was proposing, uh, like videotaping the whole city council meetings or not, whether that's a new program or it was in last year's budget, whether it was cut or whether it made it. Uh, so that's your cut list. Um, The last thing I'll mention is that we have a benchmarking report. As you know, we belong to the Florida Benchmarking Consortium. And that is an independent group that receives budget information, statistical information, from cities and counties across Florida. They do their best to have the information presented and delivered as equally and fairly from every city so that they are similar so that when you use it to compare how we're doing to other cities, you can do that. Um, the uh, benchmarking document, probably if we have a half a million, there's more than a half a million numbers in there. Um, Brett, your finance or your budget uh, manager back there, put your hand up, is the keeper of that document. If you want to see how we're doing compared to other cities, stop in his office. There's a list of cities that are approximately our size. Coco, uh, Mount Dora, uh, what was the other one? Uh, Orange, was it? What are the four? Orange. And another one. There's a bunch of cities that are within our population. You go to the, the benchmarking consortium book. Let's say you want to know how many police officers they have versus how many we have. It will tell you the number of police officers every city has. It will tell you their budget. It will tell you the cost per capita. A lot of statistical information. At the end of the day, if you read it, you will find that we are a pretty lean, mean, efficient city. You look at number of employees, when you look at number of firefighters, officers, I think if you look at everything and you compare how does the city of Tavares measure up to other cities the size of Tavares in Florida, you measure pretty well. It's a tool for you to use when creating a budget. So we're going to present a budget. You have some tools. Your um, goals which I've given you, whether they're in or out of the budget, what's been cut, and um, the benchmarking if you want to look at that. With that, I'll ask Lori to give a high-level overview of the budget that's before you, 
and at the next meeting, we will present the enterprise funds, and then we'll get into this budget, uh, because that you will have had a couple of weeks to kind of dive into it and ask questions as to why this was cut or why this was left in, as we normally do. Um, so with that, unless you have any questions of me, I think I'll ask uh, Lori to go ahead and uh, give us an overview of the FY20 general fund budget. All right. Thank you, John. I'm going to ask Brett Jones, our budget analyst and manager, to come up. And he's going to assist me as we go through the budget. And I will say while he's getting ready, um, the PowerPoint presentation that you see up on the screen is on the table out there. If you want a closer look, I've handed it out to some of the folks out here. You all also have one up here as well. Good evening. First of all, Mayor and Council, I would like to draw attention to Brett Jennings. He has done a phenomenal amount of work and, and um, just a awesome job getting this budget together for us this year. So I'd just like to give him his due. I'm so thankful. I don't know what we do in finance without him. He smiles all the time. So for that, I'm really grateful. Every year, we start off our presentation with a quote. Brett picked this one out this year. I think we may have had it a long time ago, but when John and I were and Brett were talking about how many numbers are in this budget, there you go. It's clearly a budget. It has a lot of numbers in it. So we're going to try to get work to get through this. We don't try in this city. We work at getting things done. Um, we'll get through this budget. As John said, a high-level overview. Please feel free to stop me if you have a question. If I have the answer, I will give it to you tonight. If I don't, Brett and I will take notes, and we will get you the answer before the next meeting. Our vision, our budget, is based on this council and city's vision. So everything in this budget fits that vision that we have set for us. Our broad budget goals, increased event support, fairly compensated employees, include street paving in the budget, maintain a similar level, similar level of service, and lower the millage. Those things we checked off the box. Okay, I'd like to go over some of the initiatives that this board has um, instructed the staff to do and, and complete so that you get an idea of what's happened in the past year. Some things we've completed, and John, please, um, if I miss something, if, please let me know and we'll, we'll add that as well. Downtown master plan implementation, police and fire public safety facility construction, performing arts center downtown feasibility study, the Ruby Street stormwater improvements, burying the overhead lines on, on Ruby Street. In addition, I believe I was just told this week we have lights down there. We do. So we can have that on the list. Um, Echo Park is part of the Ruby Street stormwater project with a learning component added to it. Downtown train operations. <coughs> to various nature park restrooms, those we've checked off our list. Um, in progress, we have a comprehensive master plan that um, Mike Fitzgerald's department is currently working on, um, hardening the city hall. We have a federal grant that we received to do most of the, to support most of the cost for that. We have new landscaping at Prince Daniels Memorial Fountain, another grant, performing Arts Center referendum, which this board started that process tonight. Um, rebuild Seaplane Base and Marina Docks. As John said, that's in the budget for the Seaplane Base to get that going. Uh, library expansion, that you will see in your budget with impact fees. I believe there's some additional amounts that's coming, so we may be adjusting that number as we go through the budget. Um, paving of Swanee and Gary Street and Camardi Alley, that was all paid for by grants. Uh, utility line expansion on Old 441, that's currently in progress and preliminary planning for the public works facility. So we have quite a few things going on right now. We've implemented a few things too on the economic development side of things. Downtown commercial space is near 100% capacity. It's not, we're not quite there, but we're working on it. Um, industrial park at near 100% occupancy of available space. 
the Advent Waterman Emergency Department expansion is complete and they continue to do some improvements out there. We have the expansion of the Jones Brother Air and Sea Commercial Seaplane Operation, known as FA1. And new businesses in the area, Dobbs Commercial, Commerce Park, Mr. Car Wash, McDonald's, Lake Eye Associates, Cardiology Clinic, Central Florida Cardiology and Vascular Center. And I think all of those have new construction with them. I just want to add, um, Harry Baker, the property appraiser, just released um, the statistics on new businesses come to Lake County, and he did it city by city and by uh, county, and uh, Tiberi's was number one in all of uh, Lake County, the most new businesses for any city, well, Claremont, Leesburg, and everybody was here in Tiberi's. Actually, more businesses in all of Lake County, uh, so that was a you know, that's a good thing, because I think, as we all know, um, the business community, uh, for every dollar the business community contributes to the tax base, it only uses about 80 cents in services. You know, they're not going to the library, they're not going to the parks, they're not uh, um, really calling 911 a lot. So they leave about 20 cents on the table for the residents. Uh, the residents generally use, for every dollar they provide, they use about dollar twenty in services. Um, so, having businesses come to your community helps the millage rate for the residents get the services they need. Um, so, it's really important to watch that. Uh, and we're doing pretty well in Tiberi's, well, actually, we're doing the best this year of all the cities. So, um, I think we should all be proud of that. That's the policies you've in place, the economic development program, and all of that. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, I'd like to bring this slide up to give an idea of our population. We continue to grow. When we started um, showcasing the population back in 2000, we were less than 8,000 folks. Now we're almost reaching 18,000 according to Beaver, which is the Bureau of Economic um, Demographic Research in Tallahassee. Historical millage assessed values. If you look at the bottom line, you can see our millage rate, it, uh, proposed millage rate for this year in your budget, 6.9500. Last year it was 7.1119. And your property values have went up. I'd just like to showcase this. In this slide, it shows 8.71%. We've just received some new numbers at the beginning of this week. We may be coming back to you with some additional values. I looked at it on a quick basis, and it's not a material change, but just the same, we'll update that for you. Some of the constraints that we um, work with is a millage rate decrease of 0.1619 mills, um, voted debt service decrease 0 0.0120. We have rising prices for various commodities. Um, we want to maintain a similar level of service. We want to deliver our services to a growing population. And we have aging infrastructure and equipment that we need to contend with and make sure we're addressing that. We, want, we continue to delay some of our capital equipment replacements, but we do work to keep on a, a good asset management schedule. And one thing this year is we had a significant increase in liability insurance. And one thing that I just want to point out, it looks like there's some decreases in the number of large entities that provide insurance on the open market, and that drives costs. So we feel that cost. So it's partially um, related to our experience here, but a large part of it is due to market conditions beyond our control. Okay, maintain a, a, some additional um, challenges. But position changes for general fund, we are adding a staff accountant um, in the finance department, warehouse customer service assistant. In this city, we put a lot of hats on one employee, and we go above and beyond, and it works. And we think that gives our taxpayers good value for their dollar. Um, a 3.75% pay adjustment for employees effective October 1st. Health insurance premium increases are budgeted at 6.1%. We may come back to you with the next meeting with a lower value, we're hoping, but um, at the present time, it's 6.1%. Workers' compensation increases are budgeted at 6%. Again, we don't have the final number for that. General liability insurance increases budgeted at 55%. 
as the two components, a large part, be on our control. Um, FRS pension is budgeted with a 10% increase over prior year. Fire pension contribution rate is budgeted at 19.23%, and that's for the local plan. Um, police pension contributions, 24.19%, and that's for the local plan. The FRS rate, we don't have on there, but it's just about the same. It's 25.1%, so it's very close. Community grants remain fairly constant. Um, we have in the budget $13,000 appropriated for Lake Community Action Agency, to Tiberi's Chamber of Commerce, to Tiberi's Historical Society, and the Renaissance Fair, as well as some money for additional community grants that this board may decide to um, provide to other entities throughout the budget process. Um, budget includes federal grant acquisition firm, uh, continuation this year, uh, to go after the, the large grants. I think one of those is the Tabley Trail um, grant that we're currently working on. Design and build out plan, historical museum concept plan and cost estimate, enhanced Christmas celebration program, enhanced July 4th program, and continuation with our street paving program. General fund reserves, we have unappropriated revenues of $30,000, so that's increasing our reserve balance. And of course, this is the budget presentation for just the general fund. Um, some of the things that your general fund does, general government is administration, finance, utility billing, purchasing technology, communication and information, fleet maintenance, um, city council, police, public safety, um, as you can see, there's quite a few services they provide for keeping us safe. Community development, planning, building, GIS, um, rights of way management. Culture and recreation, we have library, cemetery, recreation, and park operations, economic development. And in this budget, as you can see, there's some slight changes in parks and recreation and right of way maintenance. So as we go through the budget process through this month and next month, we'll um, clear that up and make it more clear for you. All departments, our goal is excellent customer service. Now let's start with our revenues. Um, last year we budgeted $18,053,807 for revenues. This year we're budgeting $19,214,106 net. We have $30,000 of revenue that we're it's going back into reserves. That's what that negative means. We're not spending it. Um, where do the dollars for the general fund services come from? That's a, a pie graph of the various um, types of revenue. One of our largest components, of course, is our ad valorem tax. And as you can see, I point this out as a, as a measurement focus. For ad valorem, it's right around 35%. It's 34.5%. When we, go, when we look at the expenditure um, graph, we want to see that our public safety is about equal to that, and we're always on target. And again, this year, they're right on target. This is 34.5%, and you'll see your public safety is right at 35%. Um, your utility tax, 11%, and that includes your electric um, utility uh, taxes that we collect from your electric companies, SAPO and um, Duke Energy. Permits and fees, intergovernmental revenue, and then of course transfers. Next. Uh, this is a graph that shows you how our ad valorem values have increased since our dip in prior years. We're back where we need to be and, and going strong in the upward motion. State shared revenue is staying constant. In 2019, we budgeted a million seven hundred and ninety-five thousand. This year, it's slightly higher, a million eight hundred seventeen thousand. A million eight hundred seventeen thousand. Now, we have given you estimates. The state, at, the state also provides us estimates, and we compare our estimates with theirs. They're not yet out. When those are out, we may be updating our estimates to you. And these are just some tables in your packet that I think may, may give you a good view of where you where the different revenues fall and where they've been and where they're going. Transfers and reimbursements, that's 
um, our utility funds transfer into the utility into the general fund payments in lieu of taxes as well as reimbursements for administrative expenditures next now we go to our departments our various service providing <coughs> departments and here is that slide I uh, mentioned earlier here's our public safety 35 percent and we looked at the revenue slide earlier so we're right on target we're where we should be all right, let's we'll take a little break. <laughs> We're always going through put. Uh, it's not a counting break. Though. Two plus two is not five. All right, guys. Okay, our first department, mayor and council. This department increased 5.43%, and we've listed some of the things that are included in your expenditures, Lake County League of City business meetings, chamber meetings, seminars, uh, business, other business meetings, uh, workshop supplies, awards and plaques, code books, um, um, council memberships, and the Mayor's Youth Council. We've added that over the last couple of years. Next. General administration, this covers the uh, city administrator in 1201 as well as general administration in 1202. That covers your utility bills for city hall, some of our contractual services, our debt service transfers are in this department. This department also includes the community grants that we spoke of before. We have the Ren Fair at 4,000, Historical Society at 1,500, Chamber of Commerce 7,500, Community Action Agency 1,200, and 2,000 that are on pro that have not been assigned for community grants. Now you're um, the Chamber of Commerce. There's also a contribution in the TIF fund, which will be back to you at the next meeting when we present for the visitor center. So the the Chamber of Commerce is in two two different. Finance and technolo technology. Last year, the is broke out in the finance and accounting and utility billing and then technology. Technology increased 38 percent because we are replacing computers citywide. Um, we are some of our computers are struggling to keep up and we're beyond the useful life and it's time to do so for security reasons as well. This year, we have put all replacements for computers in the IT budget instead of throughout the various departments. This is, it's easier for the IT department with just a two-person department to manage all of the replacements and to keep the records of where the computers are. Finance budget is increased 10% due to normal cost increases. I have heard this a lot from me. Where's how's those forecast numbers coming? Okay. Next. And of course, legal services, we've increased the budget 3.5%. We estimate there could be more need for legal services, so we want to make sure we have a budget to address that. Community development, um, this budget has decreased from 1,481,000 to 954,000. This fiscal year, because last year we included the comprehensive master plan in the community development budget. As um, as you recall, also we now have an in-house budget uh, building official, but we've also included some budget in there for contractual inspection services should we need them with the building um, escalating and moving forward as it is. City clerk. Um, last year, $245,444, now $261,397, 6.5%. You might say, well, what, what, what is the driver for that a little bit? Well, there's an election expense that's in this budget that wasn't in last year's budget. Human resources. Now, this budget went down from $390,074 to $310,670. Prior year, we had a contract, contract with a, com a pension consulting firm as we went through the move movement of police and fire for new employees to FRS. So that movement is, that change has been completed, implemented, so at the present time we do not have that contract included. We like blessings in accounting. Public communications, this is the uh, 
this is new in this year's budget. It wasn't in your budget last year. Uh, but our newsletter is in this budget, our advertising, and our notices for certain events and things you'll see in this budget. Fleet maintenance. Um, this budget has went up just a little bit. Normal costing increases and, uh, let's see. We increased a little, your salary change, we increased a little bit over time that we needed in that department. Um, police services increased 3.98% in police, regular police um, public safety. Code enforcement, 6.5%. Not a whole lot of change in, in this budget, but there was some increased uh, budget and amount for accreditation for police officers as well as investigative services cost, which increased over prior year. This one is appropriate right before we get to the fire department for the advanced life support. Aren't we glad we don't have to share the MRI with someone else? <coughs> All right, fire services, um, fire suppression, an increase of 4.51%, and advanced life support increased 31.73%. And I just want to point out, we had a few firefighters this past year that had attained the um, paramedic level. So, of course, when they attain that according to contract, they are moved up a little bit. So we address that. Um, there is some slide that talks about uh, the right-of-ways in the streets. You might want to read that on your own. It talk, talks about some of the things Jim, um, Mr. Dillon's department does and accomplishes a lot of things. Um, general services, facility maintenance, as well as street maintenance. Um, facilities, 9.95%. James did a good job this year of identifying all the contracts. And you'll notice that there are some contracts might have been in another department. We have them in one place. This causes an ease in the management of those contracts and the facility maintenance for the, uh, for the department. Street maintenance, uh, street maintenance uh, went down uh, a little bit and we had some of the street paving, I believe, in, not the street paving. We have street paving in the budget this year, but it's in fund 150. The, Streets went down because there was some contractual changes that we made in the street department as well. Right-of-way, this used to be in your Parks and Recreation Department. We pulled it out. It's easier to report. We do an annual report with the Florida Highway uh, Department. And when it's in one department standalone, it's easier for James and it's easier for me on the reporting of the cost. Um, the right-of-way, 9.51% increase over last year. Um, we pulled those numbers out to, so that we could give you a good value, uh, a good comparison. Um, park management, excuse me, right away uh, management increased 20.14% uh, total, 13.8%. There's a few extra contracts in there for um, road maintenance in James' department. We added Ruby Street. We did not have that last year. Economic environment, not really a lot of change here, except they continue with those economic incentive, incentives that we discussed on some of the beginning slides. I had to put airport humor in here for John. Okay, library services. You went through that one. That's okay. Yeah. You go back? You want to see it? That's Brad doing the budget. <laughs> we have to laugh as we go through the budget process. As John says, there's a lot of numbers in there. Okay. Library services, it's the whole budget has increased about 54% from 784874 to 1212777 We have the impact fee. Um, civic library expansion budgeted here. But as I said when I first started, we just got notice recently that we will be receiving more money, so we'll be updating that in the final budget. So that number will be even larger. So. 
Some things take a long time to get there. So. Okay, community services, Tammy's budget, the fun department. We love doing her budget. <laughs> she does too. Operating supplies include, include the light up event, and we've added some money for some of these events over prior year. Um, Christmas lights. 175,000. I think we had something in the budget where we bumped that up to 180, and something else was increased by five that we weren't going to be needing. Um, July 4th event, 50,000. So we definitely increased that one. We've got the Boo Festival included there. Uh, summer youth program in this budget. Um, programs that include the Babe Ruth and some of the adult programs are in this budget. Softball. Um, most of our capital is budgeted in other funds, but what we do have, we've presented here tonight. And general fund expenditures by department. As you can see, your public safety is your largest component of your budget. Um, and you've got finance technology administration, which includes your debt service. Um, general services, economic development is a little slice, but as you can see, that's your, that's your complete budget. I know I went through this rather quickly, um, so if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer. Um, we will be setting up meetings with each of you that would like to come in to do a one-on-one -on -one before the next presentation, so that give you an opportunity to ask questions once you've read through the budget we've provided to you, and we can assist you with anything you don't know, that you need more explanation for. And I guess I just want to punctuate, we just delivered the budget books to you. This is to get you oriented into the budget. Uh, I warranted you with some support material. And as uh, she said, uh, Lori and I are setting up one-on-one -on -one individual meetings with each and every one, each and every council member. And we will plow through the budget together. Uh, so you should be fully prepared um, as we go through all these budget uh, workshops for any areas you have questions on uh, throughout the budget process as changes are made we'll be taking notes and then we'll update the budget about every other uh, budget meeting based on any changes we receive from this council um, and uh, I guess that's about it back to you Mayor for questions and can I just say a thank you John I'd like to say a thank you to all our departments for their hard work in helping us put all of this information together and being patient with us as we get the numbers together. Oh, thank you, Ms. Oak. You stole some of my thunder. <laughs> <laughs> thank you to your staff for just a wonderful presentation. This is not an easy thing that uh, GF do because there aren't a lot of numbers there. And, uh, I know this is a uh, time consuming. I do want to thank all of our department heads and uh, Mr. Brewery as well for you know all that they do to put this budget together. You know, just looking at the preliminaries here, I mean, we've got a lot of great things. Uh, building up our reserves, we've lowered the millage, we've got a 30 percent increase in road paving, uh, you know, a lot of capital projects uh, that we're excited about doing. Just to, you know, it seems like there's something for everybody in this budget. I know there's a lot to digest. We do have a, a very large cut list that we probably have to go through. And, you know, if we had uh, a lot of money, we could uh, do everything. But we have the constraints of uh, you know, the, the lower village. So uh, I think uh, we'll have to go through this and just see if there's any place that we can either cut some more or uh, give us some place that we maybe some items the council really feels like we need to have these items brought back. But, uh, this is something we really need to digest and go over. And I guess Mr. Burr says we're going to be meeting with him and going over this individually. Right now, I'm going to go ahead and open up. Well, I do have um, an audience to be heard. I have uh, Mr. Vance Yoakum. Mr. Yoakum, if you want to uh, ask any questions and concerns, I just want to remind you guys of three minutes. If you do have questions, just leave those until the end and we'll try to answer those if possible. Yeah, I have the rest of the audiences. I have three minutes also. Uh, yeah, thanks uh, for presenting the budget. Thank you for uh, giving me the proposed budget. Uh, I haven't had a chance to look at it yet. Um, I got my budget shirt on here. Um, 
and uh, I am one is uh, in there. You deleted the proposed video recording. The uh, line item that you had on there said it was what seventy or ninety thousand dollar estimate. Ninety thousand. But yet last uh, two years or so ago, when you gave an estimate, it was ten thousand. Uh, and since I know what I spend on video. Uh, taping and uh, you've got staff that are always here in this off in this meeting here observing and uh, they do just what I do which is to set up a camera uh, on a tripod and film the meeting and at least start with that but I don't know where we got 90,000 although places like uses and so forth they spend probably more um, and, and I really would suggest that you add back the video uh, for the meetings, both for this meeting as well as planning and zoning, uh, especially when now ADA is causing you to reduce the number the amount of documentation that's available. Uh, we're seeing that the like the county and then I was in Mineola last night, they didn't even have their packet online at all uh, because they've got P and Z maps and things in there and they don't comply with ADA so they just don't do that in the same like uh, so it's really in my view harming transparency and we need to find a way um, as I told them last night they need to provide direction to their attorney to go find a way to resolve this issue with the League of Cities and with some of your associations that you all belong to uh, I think this needs to be fixed you need to ask uh, Daniel Webster to come in here and explain why uh, they have not uh, solved that problem. Uh, street paving, I noticed all five members in the wish list said that they wanted street paving, but there was no real estimate like uh, reduce the, uh, you have a report that ranks all the roads, and uh, normally in the corporate world you see specific budget targets like reduce uh, uh, you know, the ones that are great, the lowest grade, reduce those by half each year. And uh, to do that, because otherwise it just kind of gets mixed in with all the other things. As a, uh, I mean, I just, I look at some of those and I just say, we need, need more sophisticated uh, questions maybe from the board, in my opinion, because uh, it's not being addressed. Uh, the wages uh, increase is 3.75 percent. Uh, now, normally when you do that, you're adding it to the wage base. Last year it was 5 percent, and so you're building up this much higher target. That when at some point in time we have a downturn, that's going to force you to have to lay off people faster, and it's going to be out of sync with uh, the, the cost of living or the market economy, and uh, the companies that I've seen, they don't ever do the full increase. If you think that they worth 3.75, you make it 2 or whatever the cost of living is, and then the other 1.75 is a bonus. And then that is not subject to pension withholding and benefits and everything else. And uh, I think it's a much more uh, taxpayer-friendly approach towards uh, budgeting. Uh, and you had I noticed there was a vehicle in there at 35,000. Uh, I'll finish with this one because it's starting to get ready to push the eject button. Uh, is to uh, is why don't you lease vehicles or have a mechanism that spreads it out uh, over time so that you have an allocation as opposed to bam, it's 35,000 and you got three police cars and what maybe 150,000 for them. And instead, have a lease or a market value spread out over whatever the length of time is their life is, like five-year cycle, and you only allocate so much per year. It comes out of a fund because that makes the budget keeps going way up and down all the time because of those. Thank you. Thank you. Mary, do you mind? Uh, I just want to. I think I need to address something so the audience could know on the video. And John, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, the reason why the cost of the video was so high is because we have to be ADA compliant with closed caption and TDD. That's not correct. Yeah, there's an upfront cost of the software, which is significant. 
Um, and then there's an ongoing cost in order to meet the um, Americans with Disabilities Act. Uh, as we all know, Lake County got sued uh, four months ago, settled out of court for a large amount of money uh, for not doing it correctly. But many other cities have been sued for the same thing. So in order to do it correctly, you want to uh, purchase the correct software so that you have a better chance in court after you get sued for um, not uh, displaying these correctly. I will say this, I've written uh, every note down. Uh, good questions that you brought forward. Uh, I look forward to giving the answers to every one of those at your next workshop. Uh, so I've taken some good notes. We're going to go back and look. So you'll have a breakout a detailed breakout of the cost for videotaping your council meetings, and you're going to see, oh, that equals 90,000 bucks. Clear. Um, uh, the, um, uh, uh, the other questions that he had, uh, uh, leasing vehicles, you know, we're, we are leasing the vehicles for the police. We'll break that out, and we'll put, put all that together. Very good uh, questions from fans. We will have answers. Uh, I just want to make sure the answers are correct. So we'll do the research, we'll bring it back to you, and at the next budget workshop, we'll have answers to those good questions. Thank you, Mr. Curry. I'm going to go ahead and open up for council. Do you have any questions, uh, Mr. Curry or uh, Ms. Houghton? I enjoyed your jokes again this year.
This is our history, the good and the bad, and let's not eliminate or change it. Thank you, Ms. Burley, all great Lake County people. All right, we're going to move on to audience to be heard. Any of in the audience would like to hear? Yes, 4.30, please. Uh, and you'll see it. You'll see your booth. 
we made the platform larger this year to give you more presence. I appreciate that. So, yes. Um, so more space will be great. Okay. Um, um, just being back to the heat is always Stop. wonderful. Um, and have a perfect July. I, I've got a, a couple of things. Phil, when are you going to stop tearing up Alfred Street? Never. That's the longest project ever. <laughs> Chief, when are you going to get your fire station? I'm not going to say never. I'm going to get it. The sooner the better. I was in there today. It's beautiful. Yes, it is, and that air conditioning rehab thing is coming along pretty well. It is, yes, sir. We're, honestly, we're waiting on the CO. We are not artificially rushing. Isn't that your guy that does that? Yes. It's coming. It's coming. You're close then. We're close. Yeah. Right, good deal. Um, congratulations to Barry's All Star team, 15 and under. I saw that yesterday. If you see one of the jokers out there, throw a buck or two. It's very expensive. The kids got to go down to the hotel room, the parents got to go down there. Uh, it's a long drive. Uh, the coaches spend a lot of time with these kids. So if you can help them out, help them out. And I'm glad that we've got it automatic in our, in our budget now. So, uh, Rebecca, welcome to the team. You're going to love this city. It's a magnet. You're never going to leave. So, it's good. Thank you very much. And uh, the museum. What a wonderful museum. That's very, very nice. Very tasteful, nicely done. So. Thank you, and thank, uh, was it Herb Foundation? The Herbert Leader Foundation. He's our partner at the museum. So thank him as well. Uh, without his foundation, I'm, I'm assuming that museum would have been gone. It would have sunset about nine months ago. Yeah. So, good. Glad to hear that. And I have no history today. What? Yeah, <laughs> yeah but, but you know, I've got two other things. I've got, today is National Fried Clam Day. So, you need to go out and eat some fried clams. And today is National Eat Your Beans Day. So you're going to have fried clams and green beans or something. Uh, that's all I have there. Yeah, I just want to welcome Ms. Campbell, who uh, is the of various American Seaplane City. We're glad to have you. Enjoy uh, seeing you uh, at the library and seeing you tomorrow with the, uh, at the parade. It's a little hotter here than it is in Boston. So, uh, <laughs> Tampa's going to have great weather, so uh, I'm glad to hear that. Highs in the low 80s or so. Uh, <laughs> I'm really looking forward to the parade. Uh, it's going to be a great time. Fireworks tomorrow. It's very this is the best fireworks in all of uh, Central Florida, I believe. I many people say that uh, those are some of their favorites, so I'm looking forward to, to seeing those. Uh, what else do I have? Uh, oh, and Ms. Guidas, yes, thank you. The museum opening was fantastic. Thank you for uh, allowing us all to come there, and thanks for uh, bringing that to uh, the city of Tiberi. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's great, and can you remind us again what the hours are? Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, 12 to 5. And thank you all for your support. It was impressive to see each and every one of you there, as well as many of the directors. It was it was it was very exciting. Thank you. Okay. Enjoy the work more than I'm sorry. Okay. Enjoy the work more than that. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's our volunteer. How many visitors would you say you had? We had over 350 attendees. It got to the point that I was really happy. Fire chief wasn't there. <laughs> we would have been in some. I would have been called off to the site quickly on that one. We, it was. We, we couldn't see the floor. It was absolutely wonderful, and it continues to be written up on the paper. And today, is definitely getting a lot of traction as a result of that. That's Thank you again. Thank you. And like I said, you know, it, it just goes to show that something like that draws people to this area. It's just one more thing for people to do when they're in our downtown area. So it really is an economic driver. So. Thank you very much for bringing that to the various. Appreciate that. Uh, I did want to mention uh, we have our race relations meeting on July 23rd, and unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to make that. I believe uh, Councilmember Smith, I think you're the alternate. Do you think you would be able to go with me from that? It's July 23rd. July 23rd, which is a Tuesday. So the TRA.